I have my two willing and able volunteers, Maggie and Ethan, and we're gonna go visit our watershed model. So let's go. Welcome to our watershed. As you can see right here, we have a major body of water. This is going to be our Potomac River. You see how nice and clean the water is? Over here, we have a farm. We have lots of farms on Loudoun, in Loudoun County, some cows and chickens and a pig. We have a manufacturing plant over in the corner and up on the mountain, some trees. Uh, we have a water treatment facility and a neighborhood with some dogs in the yard and cars and back here is a golf course. And we also have a construction site going on. So do you see any sources of pollution in our watershed? What's all the brown areas? What is that stuff? Brown areas is dirt. Good job, that's right. It's definitely dirt and dirt or soil or sediment is uh, a potential pollutant because think about it, what happens is if you're a farmer and you're plowing the fields or if you are a construction worker and you're digging up the land or you've cleared trees off of the mountain, we've, we're loosening up the soil or the dirt and with rain, the, that dirt will get washed away. Think about it, when we remove any vegetation, the grass, the plants, the trees, anything like that, um, and leave bare soil, that, that soil has an opportunity to wash down into our waterways, which causes a problem. So let's add some soil, go for it. Next, we're gonna talk about, we talked about the brown areas. What about these green areas? Are these potential polluters too? So over here, remember we have our golf course and here we have our neighborhood. So the way we keep a lot of our yards and golf course uh, and even over on the farm helping our crops grow is to add fertilizer. And fertilizers have nitrogen and phosphorus in them to help plants grow. However, sometimes the problem with fertilizers is that we add too much fertilizer to our land or we put it on right before a heavy rain and all those nutrients get washed into our waterways. So, Mr. Ethan, can you help me out? In addition to fertilizer, sometimes people add other chemicals to their yards to help maintain the perfect lawn and that would be herbicides and pesticides. So herbicides kills weeds, it's a weed killer, and pesticides kill bugs. So uh, the problem with these is when we put them on outside um, and the rain falls, the residue from these chemicals can wash into our waterways. So Next, we have Fido, poor Fido, who owns a dog? Think about how many dogs there are in Loudoun County. If you even just think about your where you live, how many dogs you see every day being walked and going to the bathroom. And it's wonderful and awesome and great when people scoop the poop, but uh, oftentimes that doesn't happen and our animal waste can end up in our waterways. Another source of animal waste is our farm. And if you see right now, our farm uh, animals can freely enter our waterway here. And if they are in the waterway on a hot summer day to cool off, to take a dip, they can go to the bathroom in the waterway. That's polluting uh, our waterways even more by directly going to the bathroom in there. So animal waste can be a problem. So let's add a little bit of dog poop to our neighborhood because somebody didn't scoop, pick up after their dog, even on the roof. Yeah, okay. And then over here on the farm, in the uh, Farm Creek area, good job. Nice, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next, we're gonna talk about our cars. So have you ever been walking down your street or seen in a parking lot, uh, some black dots on the road. That oftentimes is where a car has leaked oil onto the surface of the road or, or parking lot. And what can happen is when the rain comes, um, that 
will get washed into our waterways. And oil is toxic, a toxic chemical. It does not dissolve in water and it can cause pollution problems in our waterways. So our cars are definite sources of, of, of pollution. And think about it, if, if this car was leaking uh, oil and they had to drive to work every day, let's see if someone can drive the car to work. Oh yeah, there we go. Helpers are jumping into action here. And it goes over to the factory. Guess where they're spreading the oil? All over Loudoun County, all over our watershed. So let's add some oil. We talked earlier about trash in our video. We talked about the ocean garbage patches. So we, everyone knows that litter and trash is a definite problem and it's definitely a pollutant in Loudoun County. So uh, where there are humans, there will be litter. Whether it's by accident, maybe on a windy day, you've put your trash can out and the trash can blows over and the trash starts to blow out, or somebody driving in their car uh, intentionally throws something out the window. We uh, always have some type of trash and litter collecting around in our communities. So let's add some litter and trash all around our watershed. So, so far we've talked about dirt or sediment and car oil and fertilizer and animal waste and some chemicals like herbicides and pesticides and litter. That is considered a non-point source pollution. So we can look in our waterways and we can see some of the pollution, but we don't know what to point at to say, oh, well, that's coming from here, exactly. We know, for example, that animal waste is coming from animals, but was it from Fido over here in the neighborhood, or was it from Bessie the cow? We don't know. So those are considered non-point source pollution sources. Now let's talk about point source pollution. Over here we have a manufacturing plant, and we do have some of those in Round County. Manufacturing plants can be a source of manufacturing waste and some amount of manufacturing waste is allowed to be discharged back out into our environment and even our waterways, but sometimes accidents happen and it may be released before it gets cleaned up or too much is released. So let's add some manufacturing waste to our model. <laughs> Here is another point source pollution source, and that's our water treatment facility. Remember, that is where if you live in a suburb or city, you will likely have sewers that lead to a water treatment facility, and that's where the water that we use in our homes gets cleaned up before discharging it back into our waterways. Unfortunately, sometimes due to malfunction or in some older systems when heavy rains occur, untreated water or basically raw sewage ends up back in our waterways. All right, are we ready for the fun? So now we're gonna make it rain and we're gonna get to see how the pollutants that we just added to our watershed get washed down into our bodies of water. So let's get started. Here comes the rain. Would you want to go swimming in the Potomac River now? No. Would you want to fish from there? Nope. Would you want to eat the fish that you caught? Nope. Nope. The problem is uh, this water is our drinking source. So this is, this is a source of our drinking water in Loudoun County. And, um, oh no, Fido fell down. <laughs> So the more pollution we have in our waterways, the more we have to clean things up. And that costs money. That costs taxpayer dollars to clean up our water so that we can use it as a drinking source. Here's the Potomac River. 
which contains pollution. So let's take a moment to talk about the different pollutants that have washed into our Potomac and how we can prevent them from getting there in the first place. All right, so let's start with our fertilizers. If you remember, fertilizers can be a source of excess nutrients. When the excess nutrients enter our waterways, this causes unnatural growth of algae, creating huge algal blooms, which suffocate our fish and any other aquatic creatures, as well as blocking sunlight for our plants. So here is an example of excessive algae growth in a waterway. You can see how sunlight would have a hard time getting through and also that algae, when it decomposes in the water, it consumes oxygen and that's what takes the oxygen away from the fish and other creatures that live there so they could die as well. We can prevent excess nutrients in our waterways by getting our soil tested and following the directions on the fertilizer letting grass clippings stay on our yard for natural nutrient absorption and then also farmers can create a nutrient management plan to help prevent uh, excess nutrients from running off their property as well next is our toxic chemicals like bug killer weed killer and even our motor oil which drips out on the land um, this can harm fish and other aquatic life as well as cause illness to humans and animals that eat the fish. To prevent oil leaks, we can be sure to maintain our cars as well as choosing alternatives like electric cars or electric lawn equipment. And to cut down on chemical use, we can be pulling weeds by hand, we can choose not to use pesticides, and then even planting native plants and trees to support the local food web can help by creating a kind of natural balance to keep the bad bugs in check. For example, have you ever seen one of these? This is a possum. They are nocturnal, so they usually come out at night. And studies have shown that possums can eat as many as 5,000 ticks in a single season. And dragonflies are super cool too. They eat a ton of mosquitoes for us. So creating a good habitat for these guys to exist will help keep the bad bugs away. All right, let's talk about poop. Everybody's favorite, right? The problem with animal waste is that it adds bacteria to our waterways, and these higher levels of bacteria can cause us to have to close our beaches and lakes so that we don't get sick. A great way to prevent the bacteria from entering our rivers and streams, of course, is to scoop your animal's poop when you take them for a walk to go to the bathroom. And additionally, uh, as far as the farm animals go, here at Loudon Soil and Water, we help farmers to build fences to keep their animals out of the stream, and therefore they cannot get in the stream and go to the bathroom and, and add to the problem as well. Sediment as pollution increases flooding, which is very expensive and dangerous for humans. It also smothers the aquatic habitat by preventing sunlight to get down to those bottom dwelling plants. It also clogs fish gills, making it hard for them to breathe, and then can smother eggs and bottom dwelling life. Finally, we have our jellyfish. Oh wait, that's not a jellyfish, that's trash in our ocean. And you can see why that might be a problem in our oceans because to some creatures, that trash floating looks like food. Especially, for example, sea turtles love jellyfish. And doesn't that look like a jellyfish to you? And when they eat the trash or non-food particles, then that can clog up their intestines and they can die from that. So how can we help this little guy? We can keep trash and debris out of our waterways by practicing the three R's, the reducing, reusing, and recycling, which you've probably all heard of, can help keep less trash from entering our world and therefore decrease the amount we find in our waterways. Doing things like using reusable water bottles instead of plastic ones, reusable bags instead of plastic bags, recycling our trash as much as possible. These are all good ways to practice the three R's in your home.
Congratulations! You have reached the end of the video and now you know everything you ever wanted to know about watersheds, right? Well, good, because it's quiz time. Is this a watershed? This is Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, which, by the way, is a really cool place to visit if you haven't yet. But this is where the Shenandoah River merges with the Potomac. Is this an area of land that drains rainwater and waterways to a body of water? Yes, it is obvious with this photo. How about this land though? Is this a watershed? Of course it is. You knew that, right? And how about this? Arlington, Virginia with Potomac River in the background. That's not too far from us down close to DC. Is that a watershed? Yes, we all live in a watershed. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you for learning about watersheds with me today and take care. Bye-bye.